The story of three men bound by blood and ambition began in Vimy, Alberta, on a winter's morning in 1916, with the birth of Ivan Gwen. Across the world, in another place called Vimy, a war raged, giving birth to unimagined misery and soon after to the Great Depression, whose impact was etched into the landscape as violently as the battles that preceded it. The vast expanse of the Canadian prairie was engulfed by the Depression, but for a farm boy from Vimy, surrendering to the desperation was never an option. For Ivan, the promise of the future and a better life was more practical to dream about than the backbreaking existence of living hand to mouth on the farm. Ivan picked rocks, cleared fields, planted and harvested by hand. He dragged horses and wagons from those fields when the rain and mud turned them to bogs. Like his six brothers and sisters, Ivan went hungry sometimes. In those moments, he imagined a future with power, running water, and machines that would end the isolation and break the cycle of poverty. When we get down to it, this is probably the most important point about my father. He was a, an individual that embraced change. That road to a better life began with a job at a grain cooperative, where Ivan learned about buying and selling, about business and money in a time when so much of rural life revolved around things that were not available. Seizing an opportunity, Ivan opened a general store, stocking it with every modern product and service, believing customers would support a business that sold everything under one roof. He had common sense, and uh, common sense isn't that common in this world, I found that. So successful was the idea, Ivan sold the store at a $17,000 profit and invested in a used bulldozer. With that machine, he carved fields from the prairie for farmers and eventually built roads. Modern times had come to Alberta, as did Carol Kostelik, a young woman from Slovenia whose grace and sophistication enchanted Ivan and everyone who knew her for more than 50 years as his wife. In 1952, Burning with the ambition of building a business beyond a single machine, Ivan, his younger brother Bob, and three friends pooled their machines, their experience, and their dreams, and formed North American Road Builders. There was work. It was profitable sometimes, but it was hard. Much harder and more competitive than the partnership imagined. Except for Ivan and Bob who understood the opportunity and were willing to bet the farm on continuing alone. The early days of the company were rather difficult. Uh, they had limited resources, uh, limited experience, but lots of enthusiasm, and uh, they were both hard workers. So things went uh, reasonably well for them, but it was a struggle. North Americans survived the loss of three partners, but seeing friends surrender to the stress compelled Ivan to manage risk in a very different way. For the next 20 years, the company built roads. And never forgetting their roots, Ivan and Bob operated a coal mine with farmers as their principal customers. Understanding the advantage of providing natural gas to those same farmers, North American installed thousands of kilometers of small inch pipeline to deliver a more modern source of energy. A shared ambition between brothers that began with a bulldozer making life better for one farmer at a time expanded throughout Alberta and British Columbia. There would be no turning back. Or so it seemed. Uh, my father's personality was to be very respectful of people. And through that, he would listen to people well. Uh, he would take their ideas. And uh, when he wanted to move forward, he would ask them to do something, as opposed to telling them to do something. For Bob, life had come full circle. Being so close to and successful with his older brother was a source of pride. But he longed for a life closer to the land and freedom from the responsibility North American and its ever-expanding business demanded. In 1973, with a generosity that characterized everything he touched, Ivan purchased Bob's interest in North American and embarked upon a new direction, expanding the company into a remote area where an inland sea of oil 
locked in sand, held a promise that Ivan could not resist. What he could not know was how much North American would have to risk embracing that future. He, he looked at a problem as an opportunity to solve something. Ivan's eldest son, Roger, was in his early 20s when Bob left the business. Even as a young man, he recognized stress had begun to impact his father's health, just as it had influenced his uncle's decision to leave. Ivan would try to hide the degenerative effects of diabetes and asthma, but Roger and his younger brother Martin knew the strength of mind and body their father relied upon would soon be challenged, threatening his life and the family's well-being. I felt that it was time for me to back off a bit. And so I said, I know Roger wanted it very much, so did Marty. So I, I said, okay, I'll make a deal. I'll sell you the company. Years before, Roger, just 15, was introduced to construction through the business end of a shovel. And when that first shift ended, he joined the crew for a beer, covering his face with black loam and wearing a hard hat to conceal his age. From a shovel through every piece of equipment North American owned, and in every location it worked, Roger learned to build on time and on budget, with an ethic that infused powerful new ideas in running the business. Ideas his father embraced. But then, everything changed for Ivan and for Alberta. Failed back surgery compounded Ivan's medical concerns and forced his hand. Responsibility for North American, its employees, and an exhaustive commitment to the Canadian Construction Association had taken their toll. Ivan knew it was time for a change. National energy legislation was introduced that crippled Alberta. Investment in the province evaporated. Multi-millions in contracts committed to the oil sands and beyond were cancelled. Roger would succeed Ivan as president, while Martin moved into North American's operations with a vision that would transform the company years later in a strategic move that would demonstrate Roger and Martin's financial acumen, the young men assumed the financial responsibility of buying the company, providing their father security as he sought refuge in the desert from failing health. And as he, at a young age, he said to me, uh, there's no such word as can't. And as a kid, you didn't really understand that. Uh, it was in the dictionary. And uh, what are you talking about, Dad? However, uh, he was entirely right, and it was a can-do attitude, very practical attitude, and he was always careful not to let one's emotions get carried away. Settle down, be patient, and uh, look at the issue at hand and make a decision. Roger understood the risks of getting caught in economic malaise, just as his father had 50 years before in the Great Depression. But the price of growth was debt. Bigger and more sophisticated equipment would allow North American access to specialized work few could do. With history and Martin at his side, Roger invested heavily in the promise of Fort McMurray and for the next decade survived and prospered in the toughest of times. After 25 years in the company, Roger was old enough to witness the debilitating effects of stress on his uncle and his father, and still young enough to withstand them himself. The way I handled death stress and the way we handled stress in the business was focusing on the problem. And you get so immersed in the problem that uh, you don't really have time to be stressed out. Uh, you're just working at something, and after a while it starts to get familiar and uh, you feel good because you're progressing. The business Roger and Martin owned was much bigger and more complex than the company they bought from their father. The lessons learned surviving the 1980s convinced the brothers it was time for a change. A change requiring more technical and engineering expertise and building a sophisticated workforce that broadened the scope of the company's operations. In a strategy that defined their partnership, Roger believed the innovation that burned so brightly in his brother should be trusted to lead the company. And in that glimpse of the future, Martin became president. 
In the 1990s, being young, smart, and strategic in running a construction company didn't matter when oil plunged to $10 a barrel. But Martin did what came naturally. He knew where to look and where to find opportunity. What Martin proposed would transform the construction company into an energy business, using some of the biggest, most technologically advanced equipment in the world to mine, develop, and reclaim the land. We did serious work. Everybody was hardworking, proud of what they did, yet uh, did it in a good-natured and optimistic environment. The risk of re-engineering the company both enthralled and concerned Roger. But respecting Martin's judgment was the foundation of their relationship and one of the smartest decisions North American would make. The risk in the construction business uh, was tremendous. The capital required uh, was, was great. So you had to bid the work properly, choose what you're going to bid, uh, execute well, and you needed good people to do that. I, I've been a very lucky guy. I, I'm sort of like the sandwich. Uh, one bun was my father who started the business, an incredibly great guy. And on the other side of the sandwich uh, is my brother. And my brother is a very hard worker, smart guy, uh, lots of integrity. And it was easy to hand the, uh, the, the football off to my brother and uh, let him go for a touchdown. Uh, he has an awful lot of uh, great talents. And uh, between my father and my brother, uh, they made me look good. Everything about the numbers got bigger. The contracts and the expectations. But Martin knew the strength of the company was its people. North American was a family its young president could depend upon. I was proud to work with such great people who had some tremendous ideas and wanted to excel in life. And that family learned quickly. Martin had something they could depend upon a vision for the future that asked each of them to participate in defining and executing every aspect of a leading edge business. People didn't work for us, we worked for our people. And we got away from the hierarchy as such and it was really important for our people to know that we'll provide you with what you need. That Martin was wise beyond his years, able to define a shared sense of purpose allowing the company to transform itself is not the end, but instead the beginning of another chapter. In a story that began with a boy born into poverty, imagining better days. Well, our father never really retired. He uh, seldom admitted to anybody, even when he was in his 90s, uh, that he didn't work anymore, because he thought by having an office and uh, discussing business with uh, Martin and myself, that uh, he was still sort of working. And uh, he still had an income coming in, uh, even uh, at the late stages of his life. And uh, he didn't want to ever really retire. So he, uh, he just sort of kept on with the thinking that he's still in business. It worked out. The warmth and peace of the desert did allow Ivan to reclaim his health and live to share a dream with his sons. He died peacefully years later on Remembrance Day. This is the difference with the past. And now we can do things faster, we can do things better. You know, when you're on the farm and you had four horses, you're lucky to be able to, uh, to, to, to handle one quarter six of land, and that was a lot. That's all we had. Today, you know, you've got everything. You, you, you know today that you can sow 100 acres in one day. So, you know, things have changed. I, I love what's happening. It's a long road from Vimy, Alberta, to the New York Stock Exchange. North American Energy Partners was listed as a publicly traded company. Like their father before them, Martin and Roger sold their business and invested their lives in the promise of the future. <laughs>